the Knock 'em Dead Comedy Radio Show, also brought to you by Two Eagles Auto Body. For more than 25 years, Two Eagles Auto Body has been the leader in auto body repairs and customer satisfaction on Long Island. Two Eagles Auto Body handles every type of auto repair from custom applications and restorations to repairs involving insurance claims. So call Two Eagles Auto Body and ask for John Rossi at 516-328-2527. We are having so much fun, and we know you're going to love our next guest. His name is Tony Walker, and he is a comedy guy. Comedy cures everything. So. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, I was uh, I had cancer uh, at the age of 32, um, and I do believe that uh, the laughter and the positive attitude uh, got me through it just as much as the medications did, um, which led to the comedy uh, troupe that I run called Knock 'Em Dead Comedy. We do uh, dinner theater, murder mysteries, game shows, kid shows. Uh, you know, we're not stand up or anything like that. Just comedy shows, variety what shows. Do you go to t- restaurants and where else? Like theaters? Restaurants, or private parties, corporate events, fundraisers. Did I say fundraisers? Fundraisers, right? firehouses. <laughs> Comedy shows, their murder mysteries, their audience participation. Um, we, it's a scripted show because you know there's clues and hints that have to go out, but it's not a don't blink or you'll miss something. It's not Agatha Christie. You know, right. it's just it's a comedy. It's it's lighthearted, but one of the characters does get killed, right. and then the audience has to get figure out who, who did it, it and why. Like and if it's a private party or a corporate event, we personalize it. Uh, to fit, you know, their event. Now, do you ask the audience for help for the, with the mysteries? Or yeah, they, like, they solve it. All based, by themselves? Based on what they saw during the show, we even give them a little section where they can interrogate the suspects. Oh, that's and, fun. You know, so we'll deflect, deny, point fingers at other characters, and but everybody makes the rounds throughout the whole room okay. and talks to people. The show is guaranteed. It's 100% guaranteed fun. Totally. Everywhere yeah, we go, always. everybody loves that show. The audience just, they just get so involved. And there's just such a part of the show, and that makes it even better. The other things that you do aside from yeah, mystery. Yeah, we do, we do game shows. Oh. Yeah. oh, the game show, we have a podium with lights and buzzers and sounds, and it's basically like a, a trivia game, game show. Or it right. could be, you know, again, we ad lib with that too. <laughs> so they may want a trivia game show, but if we show up and they're a loud, boisterous group and they're a lot of fun, we could ask them to do funny physical challenges or do some karaoke <laughs> or... Whatever, or name that tune, whatever we feel like doing, oh, and they'll be willing to do, we will we'll, cool. we'll take it there. <laughs> what movie introduced the phrase, there's no crying in baseball? We- what letter comes after A? B is the Is there a favorite skit that you do that just still cracks you up every time you do it? We, we, do, um, we do a lot of audience participation murder mystery shows, uh, comedic murder mystery shows. Um, and there's two shows. We have a, a mob show. We're in New York. You have to have the mob shows. Uh, and we have a redneck wedding, uh, which is just Oh, uh, that I do. I have to come see that fun. one. Oh, you're welcome yeah. anytime. Anytime. In fact, I even well, brought you a shirt. Well, growing up in St. Louis, Missouri, I have to say you did. <laughs> oh, of oh, course I, I did. I, hey. That you will wear everywhere you go. In fact, I have a whole bunch there. I'm giving one out to everybody. Everywhere here. I go. Okay. That's right. There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Knock them dead oh, comedy. Oh, that's before. great. Can Knock them dead I'm comedy. Drinking something? Excellent. Okay. Yeah, you can pretend like thanks, you're drinking thanks. something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun on the set. You know, we actually do put a, put water in it when people when guests ask, we not do. But this if you guest, but no. if you don't if you don't <laughs> get if you don't ask ahead of time. Wait, this one's full of water. You ready? Nice. One, two, three. All right, there you go. Johnny, you have a good time tonight or what? All right. KDC. That's what I'm talking K-D-C. about. K-D-C. Yeah, yeah. All right.
Yeah. Okay, we'll just do that for real now. <laughs> hey, how do you say there, people? It's Johnny Brennan, creator of the Jerky Boys, also of Fox TV's Family Guy fame. I just want to let you know you're listening to Tony and Sally on the Knock 'em Dead radio show. They're going to keep knocking them dead, so keep listening, you wacky sons of bitch. Uh, right there. Over and out there, sweet Charlie. Three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. Hello, Tony. Mookie Wilson here in 1986 Mets. How you doing? Long time no see, man. Hey, man, I miss you guys, man, at Knock 'em Dead Comedy Radio, man. I miss you. I wish I was still up there, man. But I'll wait till it won't be a little bit, and hopefully this year things will be a little bit better, man. But when you have, we talk about comedy, hey, the early years of Mets was a lot to laugh about. You had to make a lot of comedy off those guys. Hey, hope to see you guys during the summer, and uh, hopefully you'll get back on the show, man, at some point in time during the course of the year, all right? All right? Yeah, fine. Contact me, man. All right, Tony. Talk to you later. Happy birthday, Andy Plajanos, the guy who makes uh, Fridays worth watching in here. Happy birthday, Andy Plajanos. Hope uh, hope your day is full of naked activity. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Knock 'em Dead Comedy Podcast. We're live on uh, Gov's Comedy Club Podcast Twitch channel. Thank you for joining us on the Twitch. Thank you for supporting us on the Twitch. Uh, right there. Nope, right there. Right here. <laughs> right here. Please <clears throat> subscribe to this channel. Uh, like it and thumbs up it and all that good stuff. Please share it all over the place. <clears throat> Tell everybody you know about, about this great show. 
and all the great shows here at Gov's Comedy Club, uh, whether it's in the studio or, or in the club, um, whether it's on Twitch or the YouTube channel. That's where you'll see these guys tonight, 9 p.m. on the YouTube channel. We're on Twitch right now. These guys will be on YouTube tonight. <clears throat> Uh, hello, Kent Pichel. Hello, Andy. Yes, happy birthday to you. 47. My goodness. Seemed like yesterday you were just 44. I don't know. Is that when I met you? You were 44, 42, something. I don't know. <clears throat> Hope everybody's well. It's Tuesday Trivia. Thanks for joining us today. <clears throat> now, I don't know what is with these guys. Jay and Dan, you know, we had an agreement. You know, I thought they were like permanent Tuesday guys. I I, I don't know if, I don't know what happened. They were coming in every Tuesday. Last week, I had some guests coming in. Andy was 43 when we met. Oh, cool. So four years. <clears throat> I thought these guys were coming in every Tuesday. Last week, I had a, two guests, had Mo and Brian Scalaro. I mean, I didn't talk to them. I didn't know. I, I didn't. Was I supposed to reach out to them and say, hey, look, even though we still have guests, you can still come in? Like, nobody ever said, when there's guests, don't come. But now they're not here again. I don't know. Maybe they hate me. Maybe they don't like, maybe they don't like my questions. It's Tuesday Trivia, folks. <clears throat> you guys love to play. Andy and Ken. The three of us will play Tuesday Trivia today. <laughs> um, if anybody else is watching, please, when we start Tuesday Trivia, please feel free to put your comments right here in the threads, in the thread. And, um, yeah, let's we'll play Tuesday Trivia in a little while. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? Everybody's doing well? Andy, what are you doing for your big day today? Hopefully you're getting babysitters and uh, you can really celebrate. Um, all right, so what do we got today <clears throat> before we get into the trivia? Um, so, <clears throat> so yeah, one thing I'm going to talk about, something I've been talking about for a long time, speaking of Andy, um, what? Ken Pichel, the three of us, Andy will kick our butts. I, well, I don't have the other guys here and Andy kicks butt, everybody's butt, doesn't matter if there's three or 30, doesn't matter. So, if anybody, Jay, if you're tuning in, just get in the car and get here. And get that other guy on the phone and tell him to get here. Sons of bitches. Do I have Jay's phone number? Should I call him? Phone lines are open. Uh, let's see, why isn't the phone number up there? I had the phone number up there. How do I find it? There, okay, it's that. Boom. Bam. Huh. I, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out, because when, when we use Twitch, we use different software than when we're using the YouTube channel. And I thought I had it all figured out, and I thought I could have sworn I had the phone number up there. Hmm. Well, the phone number is 516-465-3990. 516-465-3990. Give us a call and say hello. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm still, it's bugging me. I don't know where it went. 516-465-3990. Um, uh, if anybody feels like calling in and say hello. <clears throat> uh, Andy, it's just another day. I'm actually anti-birthday and subsequently anti-Mother's Day. I always wish a happy Mother's Day to my mom. What does that mean, anti-birthday? <clears throat> I'm not a big birthday guy either. Um, the only time I ever celebrated, like really like wanted to do something on my birthday was when um, was when I turned 50 and it, we were in the middle of the quarantine and everybody was doing those drive-by things. <clears throat> it was just really, you know, wanted to see everybody. But... Um, but yeah, I was like, yeah, that was the only time I turned 50. I was like, yeah, I'd like to do something. I'd like to see everybody. I haven't seen anybody since we all shut down. So everybody come drive by. I like to have parties. I like to have people over. I, I, I'm a social guy. So 
<clears throat> um, so it wasn't so much my birthday. It was just more I just wanted to see people. But, yeah, other than that, I'm not a big birthday guy. I don't, you know, I'm not like, oh, I need to go out and celebrate or, you know, let's go crazy. Like, I, yeah, you know, I just like to go out and go crazy every day. Um, <clears throat> but what does that mean? But, yeah, what does that mean, anti? I'm not anti-birthday. It's just, you know, it's just a day. Anti-Mother's Day, too. What is that? What the hell is wrong with you? Any Any reason to, you know, Get together and have some fun. That's how I see it. That's how I see it. So, um, <clears throat> so yes. Yeah, so anyway, what I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> like I said, I've been talking about it like crazy. The um, And uh, Andy knows what I'm talking about. The big premiere is tomorrow. The big premiere. Very excited. Comic Sans. <clears throat> tomorrow night. Uh, at the Belmore Movie Theater, the um, it's yeah the Belmore Belmore Movie Theater right across the street from the train station. It is not <clears throat> the Belmore Playhouse, which is just just down the road, like half a mile away, and it has a lot of movie theaters. It's where the loft is. We oh, there's the look. There's there's the look. I I don't know how that happened. I don't know what I did, but there it is. There's the phone number if anybody wants to call in. Uh, share the show. Call in. Call in. Share the show. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, the, the movie, the Belmore Playhouse, which is just walking distance. Uh, you hear, you've heard us talk about The Loft. They do a lot of comedy shows. Um <clears throat> Uh, that is not where the movie is. It's the it's Belmore Movie Theater. It's one. It's just a, a single house. It, it doesn't have a, you know a lot of theaters in it. It has one theater in it. it has a little stage because sometimes they'll play music or they'll do a play. So it's um, that, they should actually switch names. Belmore Movie Theater should be the one with all the you know has like you know ten theaters in it to watch different movies. So the uh, the playhouse should be. The, you know, the one that just has one theater and one stage. Because it's only one. They can only do one form of entertainment at a time. So, yeah, so somebody call them up and tell them to switch names. <clears throat> it's at the Belmore Movie Theater, right across the street from the Belmore train station. So it's nice and easy to get to. If you'd like to be on the list and you'd like to come see the movie, better let me know quick because uh, tomorrow's the big day. We're very excited. Can't wait. <clears throat> um... The whole cast is coming. Eric Haft, Andy Plagenos, they were the two that looked like it could, they couldn't make it. And I think Carrie Caravis is coming. Um, everybody else is a definite. Andy and Eric have changed their arrangements. They've worked it out. They will be there. So this is going to be great. Um, <clears throat> so, again, get on the list because this is going to be really exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we are um, opening the doors at 730 Hope to start the movie around 8. Uh, the movie is only 35 minutes. <clears throat> I say movie. I should just call it film. It's a short film. Um, that we're actually hoping if we can get, you know, interest and so if we can get money and, you know, if we can get interest and money and whatnot. <clears throat> we'd like to turn it into a series where people get paid for their time. So, um, so that's the goal. Uh, or or maybe it'll just stay a short film and get some exposure. You know, Don's already thrown it into some film festivals. It won Best Script at the Tokyo Short Film Festival. How cool is that? <clears throat> so opening the doors at seven thirty, starting the movie around eight. Um, we're gonna say a few words before the movie. After the movie, we're gonna talk a little bit about it, what it was like to make it. We're gonna, if the audience, anybody in the audience has any questions, feel free. Um, It'll be me talking to Don and Joey Cola. Joey Cola's in the movie. So um, really looking forward to this. It's going to be such a great time. I went yesterday <clears throat> to the theater, um, and we went over, you know, everything. You know, we put the movie on the screen. We, you know, checked the lights. You know, we, we checked the sound. You know, we went over every detail how this is going to go. And it was it was something. Um, I, I have to tell you, I, I was holding out. I wanted to wait. 
I hadn't seen the final draft. <clears throat> I wanted to see it tomorrow on the big screen. That was, you know, I that's how I wanted to see it for the first time. Uh, you know, big energy in, of a being, you know, being in a theater with all you guys. But having to go to the theater yesterday to check everything, I didn't want that to be my first time seeing. I didn't want, you know, like a sound check or a rehearsal to be my first time seeing it. So I did watch it at home. Uh, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, you wait till you guys see it. It's 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 funny. Um, <clears throat> it's got some cool dramatic moments. Um, it's it, it's just a real. It's a feel good, funny film. <laughs> it uh, I, everybody's performances are fantastic. <clears throat> You know, I, I think Don wrote it with these particular people in mind. Um, <clears throat> and, he, and he let us, he gave us creative freedom to mess with the lines and play with it and ad lib a little bit. So um, it was just so much fun and very well done. You know, my son, Zach, his girlfriend, Leslie, and the whole crew, they just, they did a super job. Um, to me, in my opinion, there's nothing about this that says independent or amateur or anything. I mean, it just, it looks like a real... It looks like a major motion picture, in my opinion. <clears throat> so uh, really excited about it. Um, really excited to talk to Don and Joey after. Uh, it's just, it's, and yeah, so I went to the theater, and so I watched it at home and loved it, then went to the theater to, you know, just make sure everything is uh, ready to go. So then to see it on the big screen, um, and then to have that sound, um you know that big heavy you know sound that you get in a theater and you hear that slight echo as it bounces off the back wall or the side walls it it really it it i actually i called Don after i said all right it's official time to get excited about this movie cuz to see it on a big screen like that and then to hear that you know big movie theater sound um i i was i was just sitting i'm i'm standing and watching i'm like this you know, it was just, uh, it was really something. So um, <clears throat> we're thrilled that you guys are coming. We are, it looks like we're going to have around 150 people coming. So we're thrilled about that. We hope it'll be more. We want it to be more. I mean, trust me, we're thrilled with 150 people, but, you know, the the, the theater holds 300. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so uh, we'd love to fill it up. We'd love to see as many people, as many of our friends as, as possible. <clears throat> We're so happy for those of you that are coming. Uh, it's just going to be a great time. So, uh, yeah, 7.30, showing the movie around 8, 8.15. <clears throat> Movie's 35 minutes. We're going to talk a little bit after. Uh, then we got to be out of there at 9.30. So, um, so yeah, it won't be a late night for, for a week night. You know, so um, it's going to be great. Really going to be great. Can't wait. Uh, let's see. I didn't do anything to be celebrated. My mother, however, is the one who did something on my birthday. <clears throat> so you think your birthday should be mother, like your mother's day. Like, so we should, so everybody should celebrate their mothers on our birthdays. I mean, we just pull it together and just have one universal day to celebrate all the mothers. So you're not anti-mother's day. Well, I guess you are. You just, but you're not anti-celebrating the mother. You mother. Ken Pichel, how will how will out-of-towners be able to see Comic Sans? <clears throat> you know, that's a good question, Ken. Um, Don does not have plans at this time to throw it out there. Like, like it's not going to be on YouTube or anything. He wants to shop it around. He wants to get it into more festivals and see what happens. Uh, maybe after the festivals, maybe he'll throw it up, or maybe you know, I, you know. Of course, we're hoping that it'll get some kind of a, 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 of attention, <clears throat> um, and somebody will pick it up. So, um, so you, yeah. So this, you won't be able to see this right away. Uh, however, you know, Ken Pichel, I think you're in pretty good with Don. I bet you you can make it happen somehow. Yes, yeah, so that's weird. So now that I'm just realizing now the the phone number is gone again. So how do we do that? Comic Sans, tomorrow night. Oh, now it's back. So I guess it just stays up there for a certain amount of time and then it disappears? 
Hmm. Hmm. How do we keep that going? Uh, all right, I'll have to play with this. Well, the program, that is. Uh, we're getting ready for Tuesday Trivia soon. <clears throat> Just wanted to push the movie a little bit. So excited you guys are coming. Again, still have time to get on the list, but you got to get in touch with me. Uh, okay, so that's that. That's that. <clears throat> Speaking of shows and movies and films, have you guys uh, checked out uh, Tulsa King? Yeah, Tulsa King with Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. It's a new series on, I don't know, Netflix or Amazon or Hulu. I don't know, one of those. I, f I forget where it is, but it's a new series. I don't recall ever seeing him in a series, so I'm wondering if this is his first. <clears throat> um, he plays a mobster who goes, who is sent to Tulsa to, you know, basically just, like, take it over for the mob, you know, like, make, like, there's no mob presence at all in Tulsa, so he goes there to start it. <clears throat> it was all right. It, 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 I didn't, I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was fantastic. Good enough to continue watching, to see what happens, to see where this goes. <clears throat> um... Yeah, right now it's more of an interest thing. Like, all right, this this was all right. Let me check it out. The dialogue was a little weak. Um, there, it seemed like in this episode they were because they only you know had the first episode so far. It seemed like they were trying a little hard to make it like to to give it like that mob quality where you know like where you have your humorous violent scenes and the wise ass mafioso guy and. <clears throat> trying to give it like those memorable, you know, scenes that mob movies have, you know. Seem again, they were trying too hard. But again, it definitely kept my interest and I'm curious to see where it goes. So I'll be watching again when the next one shows up. <clears throat> um You know what what's really something that took away from the show for me was was Stallone. Um I don't know if it's age. I don't know if it's surgery. I, I don't know what it is, but, you know, like, it, 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 like his cheeks don't move. <laughs> you know, he, he looks he looks like a statue. You know, his eyebrows are like, you know, all the way up here. And I don't know, again, I don't know if it's age or if, or if it, you know, did something to his voice, but, you know, but he, he sounds a little weird when he speaks. Yeah, yeah, hey, what the... Yo, this is fucking Delta. This is my neighborhood now. I fucking own this place. It's like, what, you know, like, what happened to you? So, um, <clears throat> and then you, like, when you see him with the other actors, the actors who haven't had surgery, you know, like, they, they look normal, and you've got him in the center of it looking all plastic. He almost, he almost looks like CGI. <laughs> so that actually took away from it for me a little bit, especially the voice. I just talk like this. Yo, Adrian. Yo, yo, this is my town over here in Tulsa. I'm going to take this. But And there's like a raspiness to it. Like, I'm going to take this town over, yo. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. <clears throat> I mean, the guy is, uh, I think, 77. On the show, he, he says he's 75. But I think in real life, I think he's 77. And that's old. <laughs> my mother's 77 so that's why i said that and and she talks the same way yo adrian give me a spaghetti call it take out the garbage she sounds just like that so uh yeah let me know if you guys have seen it tell me what you think speaking of movies I don't know where the hell these guys are. Somebody get Jay. Damn it. Speaking of movies, <clears throat> see if I can find it here. There's a woman. There it is. There's <laughs> there's this woman, Annabelle Gratz. 
Graetz, G-R-A-E-T-Z, G-R-A-E-T-Z. And yeah, th- this is her in the picture. <clears throat> you may recognize her. Um, this woman, Annabelle, got her first big screen part when she was 62. Excuse me, not big screen, just screen. Won her first screen part when she was 62 in a fire safety short with Tom Bosley. Those of you who are probably around my age know Tom Bosley as the father from Happy Days. So she did some kind of fire safety short with him. After that, the film work uh, has rolled in. This summer at the age of 80... uh, Annabelle was able to clear her debts for the first time in her life. Is that a feel? Is it, this is not a great feel good story or what? I am earning more money now than I ever have, she said. It feels like a whole new world. In August, thanks to Free Guy, starring Ron, since yes, starring Ryan Reynolds, um, it was it was her first role in a major motion picture, and it turned out to be a blockbuster. Um, the film grossed more than $33 million. And i got to be honest, I never heard of this movie. But good for her. She had a major role in it. She made some bank. And she was able to clear her debts at, for the first time ever at the age of 80. Previously, it had always been hard to make ends meet. After graduating, she worked as a waiter for a few years, then sang professionally in a succession of ensembles from a cappella to a two-woman singing group, all while teaching. Uh, She was a music teacher. She had always been a not very risk average person. Always in arrears. But these days she has noticed that uh, there's a lot less anxiety in her life. She hopes to work until she's 90. There aren't a whole lot of roles for people like me, she says. Then again, there aren't a whole lot of people like me going for them. When she looks back at her work, she feels proud. And yet, would I like larger parts? Yes. Would I like a starring role? Yes. There is still time. There definitely is still time, she says. <clears throat> so good for her. I think that's really cool. Um, it's nice that, uh, you know, again, that's just a real feel-good story. I have seen her in something. I can't tell you what it was. I've definitely seen her in something. But um, that's cool to, to be 80 years old and clear your debts. You know, I, I, are, you, are you just happy to clear your debts? Or are you like, oh, shit, I wish I was younger now. I, I could enjoy this money now. Or who knows? Maybe she is going out there and going crazy at at the age of 80 why not who cares at that point ma you're almost there go out and do something (laughs) go be in a movie you can clear your debts um yeah so i thought that was really cool and it gives us hope you know there are a lot of people uh that got their break late like um samuel jackson i believe was almost 40 when he had his first starring role um uh what's his name morgan freeman I mean, you know, he was kind of bouncing around a little bit, um, probably making a living, not not a great living. Like his biggest claim to fame, uh, you know, for a huge part of his life was the electric company in the 70s. Um, <clears throat> and it wasn't until Lean On Me, which is what, late 80s when he made that movie? And I believe he was in his 40s already at that point. And uh, he's just become a, you know, superstar. I, I mean, even Sting. I think Sting was like... He was, I think, like late, well, he was still in his 20s, but he was approaching 30 when the police, you know, when, you know, when his band, the police hit it big, you know, he wasn't an overnight success. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of these guys, uh, there's a lot of people out there, you know, that make it later. And, you know, how about this one? 62. That's amazing to me. Happy Days, says Andrew Fremder, was a great show. The Fonz was quite the ladies' man, but I bet all those ladies... Let him stick it in there. A, a. Oh, so yeah. So the, so the hotline has disappeared again. How do I bring it back? Uh, let's, no, that's not it. Let me do that. Let me do that. Let me do this. And let me do that. And it's not that. Hmm. 
So there's definitely some kind of timer. It's killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. There's definitely some kind of timer there. Um, all right. <clears throat> so let's move on. We're getting ready for Tuesday Trivia, starting your starting in a few minutes. Got a couple of other items I'm going to get to. <clears throat> Lady Gaga. Are you blasting Lady Gaga in your house? Happy Days also had a lot of sit on it moments. Yes. <laughs> um, if you're blast, if you're blasting Lady Gaga in your house, there's a chance a nearby rat may be bopping along with you. A new study suggests rats can recognize and move to the rhythm of a beat, according to a new University of Tokyo study. A new University of Tokyo study published in the peer-reviewed Science Advances Journal. Only humans have previously been thought to innately possess the ability. Uh, researchers played Mozart, Lady Gaga's Born This Way, Michael Jackson's Beat It, Queen's Another One Bites the Dust, and Sugar by Maroon 5. They played these songs for rats and measured their head movements before comparing their results to the humans who participated in the study. They played the music at four different tempos and found rats best synchronized their head bops to music in the 120 to 140 beats per minute range, much like humans, according to the study. Animals can be trained to move to a beat, but the rats in this study demonstrated an innate ability to groove. <laughs> From the Lady, Gaga, Lady Gaga's hot, I would definitely poke her face. <laughs> so how weird is that? <clears throat> You know, you're sitting around, you're playing your tunes, you're just hanging out. Then you look on the floor and you see a rat looking back at you doing the same thing. You're like uh, those guys in Silent Life. I just thought that was the craziest thing. I beat my sweet maroon because I was born this way. See, so I, I laugh at his first joke, so now he's just going to keep going. He's like Costanza. Remember that episode? Where Costanza's in a movie theater and he's watching a movie and something happens in the movie and he yells, oh, that's got to hurt. And the whole theater starts cracking up. So he's like, he can't wait to go back. He goes back to the theater like a week later and he, you know, he's waiting for that scene so he can yell it again and be, in, be in a sensation. And he yells it again and nobody left. <clears throat> um, yeah, I I mean, I don't really... I'm, I'm trying to think of jokes to, to go with this story, but... I really didn't come up with anything, but um, I just thought that was a weird story. Like, like is that a way to like get you know grab a rat without him seeing you? You just you know put on Lady Gaga and you know the rat's eating his cheese and just and then you grab him by the tail and throw him out of the house. You know, you see the rat sitting there. All right, we're getting there. Tuesday trivia soon. <clears throat> um, I got a question for you guys. Um, if you guys are baseball fans, another reason I was hoping Jay would be here because he's a baseball fan like me, and he would know this name. Yasiel Puig. Yasiel Puig. Um, he's a former uh, baseball player. Major leaguer. <clears throat> um, past few years, he's been playing in South Korea. But um, this week, he pleaded guilty to a felony charge of lying to a federal law enforcement agent about placing bets on sporting events with an illegal gambling operation. The offense carries a maximum of five years in federal prison. Puig currently playing, uh, and, um, yeah, has agreed to pay a minimum, fi minimum fine of fifty-five grand. He began to place bets in 2019 through an illegal gambling uh, business uh, out of California. He started he started placing bets in May of 2019. By June of 2019, Puig owed this illegal gambling service $283,000, you know, in lost bets. <clears throat> he he pay, he went and paid the service 200 grand 
then placed 900 additional bets on tennis, football, and basketball games. <clears throat> Federal investigators interviewed Puig in January of this year, during which Puig provided false statements despite being reminded that lying to federal agents was a serious offense. So he's pleaded the guilty of one count of conspiracy to operate an illegal sports gambling business and one count of filing a false tax return. His hearing is scheduled for March. <clears throat> I, it doesn't get much stupider than that, folks. <clears throat> I'm going to lie to federal agents... I mean, uh, what what's your thought? I mean, he he's baseball, so at least he didn't bet on baseball. He didn't pull a Pete Rose and bet on baseball. <clears throat> um, so, I, I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, you know, tons of guys and girls bet on sports. Why he had to bet with an illegal gambling service is beyond me. <clears throat> at one point, this guy was a superstar in baseball. You know, he had access to everything. Why would you have to bet to it with an illegal gambling service? It's beyond me, you know. But really, what really gets me, though, to be honest, is how much money this guy lost so quickly, was able to pay it, and then place 900 more bets. If this doesn't say that we're making too much, you know, people, like, you know, the priorities are so weird on how we're paying certain people. I would freaking take away half of his salary, throw the rest, you know, at teachers or, you know, people that are really doing important stuff. You know, this guy, not to say he's not doing something important. I do feel sports is entertainment, and I do feel entertainment is important. It helps with mental health. It keeps us sane when we need to just, you know, get away from the world. <clears throat> so it is important, but... But when you're making so much money that you can bet this kind of money, I mean, you're, you know how many people, like, you know, there are people that don't even make close to that in a year. And this guy's just betting his money away. It, it, that kind of stuff, it makes me nuts. And, and then to be so, and then to have your ego so bloated that you think you can beat federal agents. Well, guess what, jackass? You just had to pay a bunch of money in fines, and now you're facing jail time, schmuck. They should see if female rats tweaking. They should see if female rats tweaking makes male rats watch a half hour of reels of female rats twerking. <laughs> uh, Pete Rose used to bet on baseball. I'll bet he'll slugger. Oh, yeah, got that one. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, this guy didn't pull a Pete Rose. He wasn't betting on baseball, but he was still an idiot. <clears throat> and I I have no problem with people people being paid accordingly for what they do. Um, I have no problem with people, you know, making millions on a movie or playing a sport. But when you're but when you have that kind of money that you can waste it on something like betting and you can waste a ton of money, sorry. You know, you don't deserve it. <clears throat> Which leads me to another topic. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos plans to give away the majority of his $124 billion net worth during his lifetime. He told CNN in an exclusive interview he will, devote, he will devote the bulk of his wealth to fighting climate change and supporting people who can unify humanity in the face of deep social and political divisions. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff Bezos. <coughs> Excuse me, but... <clears throat> I think dust just flew out of my mouth. <laughs> or it just happened to be there. There was some kind of something just flying around. <laughs> so thank you, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. I almost said Bozy. Thank you, Jeff Bezos, for um, helping us with your $124 billion to, to make this world a better place. How exactly is Jeff Bezos going to do that with that $124 billion? Bezos' vow to save humanity was light on the specifics. Shocker. And this marks the first time he has announced plans to give away his money. Critics have chided Bezos for not signing the giving pledge 
A, it's, it's a promise by hundreds of the world's richest people to donate the majority of their wealth to charitable causes. In a sit-down interview with CNN, Bezos speaking alongside his partner, Chloe Milas. Bezos, alongside his partner, the journalist... Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. I screwed that up. The journalist at CNN, her name is Chloe Milas. <clears throat> Bezos was... Uh, Bezos was... Bezos... I should start this over. Bezos was giving this interview alongside his partner, the journalist turned philanthropist, Lauren Sanchez. There's another shocker. I'm dating one of the richest men in the world. I can give up my job as a journalist, and I'm now a philanthropist. Because that's what all rich people are. And they do such great work, don't they? I mean, think of all the philanthropists that you can think of just off the top of your head. The couple is building the capacity to be able to give away this money. Bezos declined to identify a specific percentage or, or failed to provide concrete details on where it would likely be spent. Despite being the fourth wealthiest person in the world, Bezos has refrained from setting a target amount to give away in his lifetime. Bezos has committed $10 billion over 10 years, or about 8% of his current net worth, to the Bezos Earth Fund, with which Sanchez co-chairs. Yeah, so first off, if it's, it's, it's the Bezos Earth Fund, so I'm sure it's going right back to Bezos, even if it's not, 8%. Thanks, pal, 8%. And, and, and Sanchez, you know, his girlfriend co-chairs it. So how much does she get paid as her, you know, as a philanthropist? Sanchez told CNN she anticipates venturing into orbit herself sometime in 2023. And while she did not directly address who will be joining her, quickly ruling out Bezos as a crewmate, she said simply, it will be a group of females. Girl power, yeah, ladies. Meanwhile, Bezos may be adding NFL owner to his resume. Bezos and Jay-Z are in talks of a potential joint bid on the Washington Commanders. <clears throat> I got an idea for you, Jeff Bezos. How about you take a little less money because you obviously don't need it. Stop building these stupid spaceships, which mean nothing. How about you pay your employees a little bit more? Forget the charities. Don't even sign this giving pledge. Pay your employees. Give them health benefits. I can't think of a better charitable cause. You jerk. <clears throat> Yeah, he, he wants to help the world. He's going to give away his money in his lifetime. Yeah, while he's building spaceships for you know rich people and celebrities like William Shatner to take a joyride into space. Uh, you remember when Shatner did it? And he came back. He, it changed my life. Fuck out of here. <clears throat> people are struggling to, to afford a bus ride. And you're going into space, you know, and it changed your life. Oh. <clears throat> Shady Bezos and Dirty Sanchez. Uh, deep political divisions. It's, is that what sex in the Oval Office is called now? Billionaires do this all the time. <clears throat> they set up companies that their families are on the board of. It becomes like a trust. It is total bullshit. Yes, Andy, you're absolutely right. Now, let me just say, <clears throat> you know, I'm sure... Jeff Bezos is a dick, but I'm sure he worked hard to get where he is, you know, and, and there's no written law that says when you make the kind of money he's made or something in that ballpark that you have to give it away. You know, uh, you know, I mean, you know, it, by that, by that principle, we'd all, even though we make less, a lot less, we, you know, by that principle, we should be giving away our money too, you know, so I, I totally understand that, but when you have money to go, when you have hundreds and thousands of dollars to go and, you know, use it on sports betting, when you have millions or even billions 
So you can build a spaceship, a recreational spaceship. <clears throat> no, sorry, you don't need all that money. And of course, we all want to make money to put away for our kids and our retirement. And we all want to live comfortably. We want to put something away for our grandkids even. I get all that. I'm not disputing any of that. But when you have $124 billion, you can put plenty of money away for your family. And and again, stop with this bullshit of you know your charity work or your phil- philanthropy work. Just give the money... To, into your business, give it into, put it to your towards your employees. That's all you have to do. They'll be appreciative. Your tur- your your turnover will be less. Your employees will be dedicated and happy. They'll go out and spend their money, which helps the economy. It, it drives me nuts. A dick can't always work hard without a little help. Very true. Well, sometimes. You do it yourself. Uh, I hope Bezos' rocket explodes like the Challenger. Oh, Fremder. Oh, my goodness. That's what I get for not reading in advance. Holy. Fre- Andrew Fremder. F-E-F-R-E-M-D-E-R. Andrew Fremder. I just read it. <clears throat> All right. With that, let's do some Tuesday trivia. If anybody talks to Jay or Dan, please yell at them. Oh, I think they're coming tomorrow to the movie. I'm going to yell at them. Mm. On Thursday of this week, our show, um, comedian Hugh Murray the Fourth is scheduled to be here. <clears throat> uh, his first time here. He's a hilarious comedian. Uh, good guy. Looking forward to having him. So I'm going to talk to him. Thursday, assuming he's still coming. If if anything changes, um, yeah, I'll let you know. But Andy, what I'd like to do, I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take a lot of pictures and video uh, tomorrow night at the at the movie premiere. Uh, if anybody does the same, please send it over, because uh, then I'm, I'd like to wait till Friday when Andy's here, so we can talk about the premiere and talk about the movie and share the photos and videos with you during the show. <clears throat> so Andy, that's my plan for. For, th- for 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 Friday, um, and uh, I don't know, maybe maybe we'll ask you know around at the at the premiere. Maybe get some people to come in on Friday to talk about it too. All right, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, I hold in my hand this week's Tuesday trivia. This is me wasting time because I'm by myself and I didn't anticipate being by myself today. I hope you guys are all right with me doing the show today. I don't, it's not that I, I'm always, I always enjoy my time in here, but I just feel the show suffers when I'm by myself. I need somebody to bounce off of and joke around with and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So that's why I've been trying hard to get people in here almost every day. It's not easy since, you know, we're on at 11 o'clock in the middle of the day. But, uh, and speaking of sidekicks and people doing the show with me, uh, Sally started her full her new job last week. Uh, yeah, she's she got a full time job, so she's not here. Um, and uh, she's doing well. She's doing well. It's going well. Little little bit of a crazy start, you know, when you don't know what you're doing, like any job. But um, but she never knows what she's doing. No, she's uh, no, she's uh, doing well, and she's she's enjoying it. So um, just thought you guys might like an update on Sally. Um, all right, here we go. Ken Pichel's all excited about trivia. All right, so the way this works, I'm going to ask some random trivia questions. There's no theme. There's no nothing. It's just random. Uh, I'm going to ask you the questions. Please put your answers in the comment thread. And uh, after I, I do all the questions, I read all the questions. I don't give the answers. After I'm done with with the questions, I go back, ask them again, read your answers, give you the correct answer. There's no prizes, there's no nothing, it's all for fun, and it gives me the opportunity to make fun of you. So there are, so we have Fremders commenting and Andy and Ken Pichel, but there's more than that watching. So even if you're new new here, just, uh, 
if um, so, if you're brand new, you haven't commented at all yet. Today would be a great time to do it. You can comment on the thread and give us your answers to the trivia questions. And please like and share the show and share the link and tell everybody you know about all the shows, the great shows at Governor's Comedy Club Podcast, whether it's here on Twitch or on YouTube. <clears throat> here we go. Question number one. How many steps are there to the top of the Empire State Building? How many steps are there to the top of the Empire State Building? All right. Hang on a second. We're going to take this call. <clears throat> are you looking to get on the list for tomorrow night? Uh, hey, do you want me to call in and do trivia with you? <laughs> well, I think you already have. All right. I'll call you right back. Oh, wait. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, pal? I am doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. And yes, would love for you to sit here while we do the trivia. That would be great. So, did you hear the? I, did you hear the first question? I did not. I did okay. not because I was clicking through to my phone. <clears throat> All right, here we go. The first question: How many steps are there to the top of the Empire State Building? <laughs> and he hung up. <laughs> He's like, "What did I call into?" Six thousand. Six thousand. It's probably wrong. Uh, could be. Could might might not be. Uh, next question. I may have asked this question before. I'm going to ask it again anyway. What English word has the most definitions? What English word has the most definitions? Dang, you pulled out some tough ones today. <laughs> Sorry. I'll I'll dumb it down in a little while. Wow. I didn't realize how much I was putting myself on the hook by trying to call you and help out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with... You're getting rusty. You haven't played in a while. I'm very rusty. <laughs> I'm going to go with... Tar. I bet that's wrong. You say, tar, T-A-R? Car. Oh, car. Automobile. Car. Okay, got it. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What rock superstar left $2,500 in her will for a farewell party so my friends can have a ball after I'm gone, as she put it? What rock he, super, he, super Superstar left $2,500 in her will for a farewell party, and she said, so my friends can have a ball after I'm gone. And she is now gone. She's been gone a for a ball, huh? Uh, don't read into it. You're not a pervert like me. It, there's, that is not a clue or anything like that. That, those, that, was just, that was her exact quote. $2,500 isn't a lot of money. <clears throat> But maybe it was then. I'm going to go with Janis Joplin, who probably didn't know she was going to die when she died, but i got to get something. <clears throat> All right. I, that's a good one. Uh, let's see. All right. I'm skipping this one. Um, I'll skip that one. All right. Here's a nice easy one for you. Who said he floats like a butterfly? Um, I'm going to hope that Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay said that about himself. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What role did Pamela Anderson play between 1992 and 1998? So I'm looking for the, the name of the show and the, and her character. Dang, we're on the question. What questions already? The, no, that's not that's not the 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 racy question. The, uh, she was on a TV show from ninety two. Yep, I, I don't know what she was on besides Baywatch, so I'm gonna go with Baywatch. All right. Do you know the name of her character? <clears throat> uh. 
Nope. I'm going to say Chrissy in honor of Three's Company. And I bet that's wrong. <laughs> that's funny. Um, all right. Let's see. So next question. Um, another nice easy one for you there, Dr. Adman. Which character was it that advised children that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down? Come on. A spoonful of sugar helps medicine go down. Come on. Hey, Mr. Rogers. All right, Mr. Rogers. Uh... All right, here's For everyone a, listening, I would bet against me on that. It feels like that's wrong. <laughs> you never know. Um, all right, here's here's a weird question, and I might have to repeat this one. What's the most popular animal that is eaten before it's born and eaten after it's dead? Chicken. Okay, so you understood that question. All right, good. All right. Um... All right, I'll skip that one. <clears throat> what is the postal abbreviation for Oregon? O R. <clears throat> o R. All right. Um, actress Susan Tomoling, T O M A L I N G. This is a multiple choice question. Actress Susan Tomaling, Tomaling, Tomaling <laughs> is better known as who? Is it Cher? Is it Suzanne Summers? Is it Courtney Cox? Is it Susan Sarandon? Or is it Jeff Bosey? As tempting as it is to say Jeff Bosey, <laughs> in honor of already having answered Chrissy, I want to go with Suzanne Summers. Who knew nice. she was going to pop up in this? Uh, yeah, I was actually surprised about that myself. Um, all right, here we go. The last question. You can in induce sex dreams how? How can you induce sex dreams? Is that streams, S-T-R-E-A-M-S? -E no, dreams, like going to sleep and having a dream. Sex dream. Ah. How can you induce a sex dream? That was unexpected. You made it less racy than I did. Um, <laughs> dreams. Um, <clears throat> by wah, falling asleep to a soap opera. Oh, that's interesting. A nice. Everybody dates everybody in the family, 1970s kind of soap opera. <laughs> Watching Dallas. Exactly. All right. Nice job there, Dr. Edman. Let me... Uh... Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so let me go back and find where he started the answers. Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> Whoops. Okay. Here we go. Going to ask the questions again and go over the answers. How many steps are there to the top of the Empire State Building? Adman said 6,000. Fremder said, "How many? however many stairs before I turn around and say, forget it. Andy Plagenos first said three. <laughs> and then he said, in between 1,000 to 2,000. So, I don't know. Does Andy get credit for that? It's 1,575. And I feel Andy should have been more specific, but you know what? It's his birthday, so we'll let him. We'll let him get away with it. Andy won. The rest of us zero. <clears throat> there you surprised. go. Surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, next question: What English word has the most definitions? Um, you said car. Uh, Fremder just typed out the whole alphabet. Now I said, if I remember correctly, I I asked this question before. Andy Pajano said. If I remember correctly, the word is set. Well, Andy Pajanos is correct. The word is set. That word has the most definitions in the English language. <clears throat> uh, what rock superstar left $2,500 in her will for a farewell party? Uh, as she said, so my friends can have a ball after I'm gone. 
Um, Andy Pugino said Gray Slick. Fremder said Deddy White. <laughs> but Ken Pichel said Janis Joplin. And that answer would be correct. No way. 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 And that was, yeah, that was a super guess. You went by the price tag and p- pieced it together that it must have been a long time ago, and you totally nailed it. Janis Joplin. Wow. Did, did I say out loud that, like, <clears throat> but she didn't, like, she died before she knew she was going to die, or did she? Maybe she you, knew. I mean, premonition? Who knows? I, yeah, well, can I, I say happy birthday to Andy? Happy birthday, Andy. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was some kind of premonition or maybe she knew cause she was a heavy drinker. Maybe she knew she was going, I don't know. Um, maybe she only had two friends and it was like 1250 <clears throat> bucks a piece. Oh, that, that would still be all right with me today. Um, all right. Who said to float like a butterfly? I was surprised how long it took you to get it, but yes, Muhammad Ali is correct. You got it right. Andy Pajano's got it right. Andrew Fremder said the person that said it was every gay guy he's ever met. Oh my goodness. Um... What role did Pamela Anderson play between 1992 and 1998? Name the character and the show. Uh, Ken Pichel said Baywatch and Chrissy. Andy Pajano said Baywatch and CJ. And and Fremder said the show with the bouncing boobies. Uh, and then Jeff Posey's watching. Good morning, Jeff Posey. Uh, good, good afternoon, I should say. Um, Andy Pajano claims he never watched Baywatch. But he knew the show, and he got the name of her character right. So somebody's, there's no way he never watched. Andy Pajanos, let's see. So 1992, that's 30 years ago. So Andy, 30 years ago, was 17. There's no way he didn't watch Bouncing Boobies on regular TV at the age of 17. He definitely watched that show. So I was close, though. <clears throat> well, I yeah, said- you, you said Chrissy. I said Chrissy, and you know what the C stands for? I didn't know this. I'm your Google guy. It stands for Casey. That's pretty close. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's yeah. It, you get credit. Definitely, you got the right you got the right initial. It works. Close enough. Definitely close enough. Uh, next question, which Ken Pichel, I might just yell at you for this one. I am shocked that you didn't get this one. Uh, which character was it that advised children that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down? Ken Pichel said, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Ken Pichel. Sing the song. Sing it. Sing a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I I can't. I mean, besides the fact that I can't sing, I can't even remotely find that melody. Andy Pajano says, Julie Andrews was never hotter. Does that help you? Makes me think of the sound of music. Mary Poppins. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> You're not familiar. You you weren't forced to watch Mary Poppins a million times as a kid like the rest of us. Uh, clearly, no. And I definitely <laughs> watched a lot of Disney movies. I mean, when when I was pondering it, I was thinking, all right, are we in the Mickey Mouse realm or something like that? You know, again, early 70s cartoonish something. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know if it was like Muttley from that Laugh Olympic show, but no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Muttley. <laughs> I'd like to hear Muttley sing that song. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very shocked. Very shocked that you... Uh... Spoon so I clearly got it wrong. Who else yes. got it right besides Andy? Uh, let's see. Fremder said, Spoonful of Sugar sounds like a Coke reference, which would explain all the dancing on the roofs. So, yeah, so he knew it. Um, yeah, and that's it. <clears throat> all right. Um, what's the most popular animal that is eaten before it's born and eaten after it's dead? Everybody said chicken. Everybody got that one right. Um, the abbreviation for Oregon uh, Ken Pichel and Andy Plagianos got it right. And, of course, Fremder had just wrote O-R-G-N. <laughs> um, actress Susan Tomaling, 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 uh, is better known as Cher, Suzanne Summers, Courtney Cox, Jeff Bosey, or Susan Sarandon. 
Jeff said it's him when he's playing when he's in the dress in one of my shows. Uh, Pajano says Suzanne Summers. Fremder says he wishes he was Suzanne Summers' thigh master. Um, and Ken Pichel also said Suzanne Summers. You guys are all wrong. It's Suzanne. It's Susan Sarandon. <clears throat> Suzanne. Yeah, but 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 I. But but I said what Andy said, so I mean, when that happens, it makes you feel like you're right. <clears throat> you're you're absolutely right about that. Yeah, I I agree. Um, plus, it's his birthday, so you guys get credit anyway. Um, yes. <laughs> say what Andy said. It's his birthday. <clears throat> That's well, right. Answers count. <laughs> Not very many. How can you induce sex dreams? Ken Pichel said from watching a soap opera when you're about to go to sleep. Uh. Fremder, I'm not reading that comment, which is why it was blocked. Um, Plagiano's Yikes, wa- glad I can't see it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, watch. Plagiano said, watch porn or have sex before you fall asleep. Bosi, leave the machine on before you go to sleep. Um, Andy says, I, re- I said Gray Slick because I think she was referring to an eight ball. Oh. Uh, Plagiano, I stole pornos from the stationery stores. I didn't have to suffer through the terrible acting on Baywatch. I still don't believe you. You watched it. Um, all right, the answer is you can induce sex dreams by your sleep position. A study published in um, a study published found that people who slept face down on their stomach with their arms stretched above their head had more sexual dreams, including dreams about affairs with celebrities. <laughs> I have no idea why face down your arms stretched like that. I don't know why that would induce a sex dream, but. But that's what this says. I mean, like, are your arms wrapped around the pillow, or are they like <clears throat> stretched out above your head as far as they'll stretch? It just—it says it doesn't say anything about the pillow. It just says stretched above their head. So I would think stretch the word you know, being that they're using the word stretch, I would think it's you know straight out. Andy Pajano's face down and ass up, maybe. <laughs> Jeff Bosey, all of a sudden, I'm going to sleep with my st- on my stomach tonight. <laughs> Oh, come on, did he say all of a sudden? <clears throat> yeah, true. He he's tried every position there is. Um yeah, but that's uh yeah, I don't really get that, but that's what it said. So now uh so You know what the problem was? No. That was kind of sort of <clears throat> in the realm of being a biology question. In which case, normally I would have copied Sally's answer. You're absolutely right about that. Maybe I'll try to get, like, Sally's answers in advance or something. Oh, there's a plan. Yeah, maybe I'll try that. Uh, from there, above, stretched above the head sounds right. Yeah, I think he's, yeah, referring to a different head. Um, so, uh, so you doing all right down there, uh, Doctor? I am, I am. How about you? Doing all right here, too. Doing all right. Um, and work is good and, and the family is good? Yep, everything's good. We actually um, just, we were out of town last week. Uh, April and I went and celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary, which was back in September, but we delayed the trip uh, to wait for it to be a little bit cooler. Okay, well, where'd you go? Somewhere even more south? Um, We went to Savannah, which would have been really hot in early September when our anniversary is. Right. So it was really cool. I'd never been there before, so it was fun. What do you, a lot of sightseeing. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I was about to ask. What do you do in Savannah? What's there to see? Um, Crazy cool nature, Spanish moss, um, oh. awesome old architecture, little um, open window bus tours around town and stuff. We did a, a night ghost tour kind of thing that Ooh. stopped in two places, too, so... Uh, it was interesting. It was fun. And we, you know, for good measure, we rode out the hurricane there. Because why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Because after the destruction, you get to go home. The uh, So did you, so tell me about the ghost tour. Did did, did you see a ghost? No, we oh. did not. Damn we it. did not. I mean, there was, there's basically, it was, it's interesting because it's historical because they're, Definitely were, you know, more more than their share of murders in that town over the years, including, of course, um, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil and that, that whole right. true story. 
Um, but basically, it was a lot of historical kind of stuff that was then coupled onto the end, tacked on. And a lot of people think this, and this person said they saw that, or then this happened. So, you know, that was the kind of unconfirmed ghosty aspects. Oh, goodness. Wow. But right. it was interesting. It was a cool city. <clears throat> very nice. And, and happy anniversary to you guys. Good evening. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very you much. You got it. And I appreciate uh, you calling in and, and playing with us today. I had the opportunity, so I thought I would just jump at it and get a little break in the work day here today. Very nice. I'm glad you did. <clears throat> well, thank so. you so much. I will jump off here and resume my place in the Twitch stream. <laughs> thank you, pal. Good to hear your voice. You too. Thanks, Tony. See you, buddy. Kent Pichelle checking in and playing some Tuesday trivia with us. Hello, Joan Asher. She says, hey, Doc Ken, I'm always late to the party. That's all right. You can watch on replay. Uh, the show will be on Twitch. I just started yesterday. Uh, since we've been on Twitch, I haven't put anything on YouTube from, from this show. So just yesterday, I, I went back to when we, we started in, on Twitch in September. So I went back and I started putting um, some shows on YouTube. Um so I'm working on, I started, you know, from September and I'm working towards, you know, all the way getting, you know, getting back to here. Um, and I did th just this morning uh, for our birthday boy, Andy Pajanos. I put on two Fridays ago when we had Laura Patton on. If you guys didn't see that here on Twitch, um, I put that show on YouTube this morning. Go back and watch that one. The, the two of them were hilarious. Uh, they should do a show together or something. They were really funny. Uh, thank you, Ken Pichelle. Uh, Andrew Frender, I love going down south, which is also, by the way, uh, it induces sex dreams. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> so that's it for us today. Um, once again, <clears throat> if anybody, uh, if you haven't gotten in touch with me to get on the list for tomorrow night, please do. We'd love to have you. Uh, very excited about the big day tomorrow. Um, the plan as of now is to do like a little... Um, wrap up to do like a little reporting on how the night goes we're gonna uh, me and andy are gonna do that on friday as of now we have hugh murray a great comedian scheduled to come in here thursday um so we'll save all the talk about the premiere of comic sands we'll save that for friday show when andy's here because andy will be there tonight so we can share our experiences together um so yeah in the meantime uh like i said you know we're not here on wednesdays so we'll be back Thursday with Hugh Murray, uh, and then Andy on Friday to talk about the big premiere. Very excited. Uh, can't wait. It's finally here. The premiere of Comic Sans at Belmore Movie Theater uh, tomorrow night. And again, I'm going to say it again. Get yourself on the list. <clears throat> get in touch with me, and I'll put you on the list. Um, very excited about this short film that's going to be playing tomorrow night. So, uh, yeah, be sure to join us. We'd love to see you. Don't forget, uh, also, <clears throat> this weekend is the big the big show, Hershey and the Keegs at Governor's with Carla and Tom and Jay. And I'm sure Jay will show up to that, even though he didn't show up here. Prick bastard. So, um, there you go. Uh, it is Tuesday, so we got... <clears throat> um, Good Times, Bad Times is scheduled to be on tonight at 7.30. Um, and then 9 o'clock, Hershey and the Keegs. Um, Jeff. Uh, I don't think, I didn't, I, I haven't heard as far as what they're doing as far as a guest. So I don't know, maybe it's just the two of them again. I, I, I don't know. Either way, but I know the show is on. Good Times, Bad Times at 7.30. Hershey and the Keys at 9 o'clock. Both shows on the YouTube channel. Both shows on the YouTube channel. And then we'll be back here on Twitch Thursday at 11 with Hugh Murray. Great comedian. If you don't know him, check us out Thursday at 11. Go to govs.com and uh, get yourself tickets to Hershey and the Keys show this weekend. Um, make some reservations to a lot of the shows. There's lots of great shows over at uh, McGuire's in Bohemia. And, of course, Governors here in the club, the main club in the Giggle Room here at Governors in Levittown. Lots of great stuff. Govs.com. Go to knockemdeadcomedy.com. Check out our schedule 
Uh, we're hoping to get some holiday work together. We're, we have a few private gigs, um, and we're starting to book some stuff for after the new year, including uh, something around Valentine's Day right here in this building, possibly. So, uh, yeah, knockemdeadcomedy.com. Or if you're having an event, a private affair, a corporate event, a fundraiser, or you just have a room and you want to put on a show, uh, knockemdeadcomedy.com. Find out uh, wh- who we are, what we do, and how to get in touch with us and book us. And, of course, like I said, govs.com, Govs Podcast. Go to our Facebook page, Govs Comedy Club Podcast. Get in touch with us through the Facebook page. If you'd like to do your own show, whether it's on our networks or you'd like to do it, uh, you know, p- post it yourself on your own platform. We got cameras. Let's see. We got that this camera. Uh, we got this camera and a bun- and a few others, a few other cameras. Um, <clears throat> and there's the phone number, even though we're signing off. <laughs> um we got cameras, we got lights, we got phones, we got graphics, we got Zoom, we got microphones, we got couches and chairs and tables and rugs and doors and people. Get in touch with us through our Facebook page, Govs Comedy Club Podcast on Facebook. Uh, we'll hook you up with this uh, this great studio and um, get you going. So that's that. We're going to get out of here. Once again, good times, bad times tonight, 730 on the YouTube channel. Hershey and the Keeks tonight at 9 o'clock on the YouTube channel. Have a great day. Thank you, Ken Pichelle. You too. Enjoy your Tuesday. Enjoy your Wednesday. See most of you tomorrow night at the theater and then back again on Thursday with Hugh Murray. All right, we're out. We'll see you guys later.